really want to make data a powerful mechanism for healthcare, you need to get it um, delivered to people in a way that will get them to change behavior. Either their behavior or the patient's behavior or somebody's behavior needs to change. Um, because uh, the fact is that most of the problems in uh, North America and, and increasingly the world um, come down to behavioral conditions. All of these are behavior-related conditions. Um, so obviously obesity and smoking, um, you know, 20% of the population still smokes um, in the U.S. and Canada. And that 20% that, uh, is a particular recalcitrant 20%, right? They are, they are the people who, who are hardest, hardest to get those people to quit. Um, uh, drug compliance. Um, most people only uh, who are prescribed drugs only take 50% of the drugs that they're supposed to take, or they only take 50, it's only 50% compliance. So only, they're only taking drugs half the time they need to be, right? That's a, that's an abysmal rate of compliance. It's not only abysmal if you're a drug company, but it's also abysmal if you're a clinician because that means your patients aren't doing what you've asked them to do. Um, it, that that correct me if I'm wrong, but that's a very frustrating thing for doctors. Yes. Yes, she's frustrated. Um, and then there's chronic disease management. That's what that's what this is. A de, uh, this is a blood glucose monitor. But getting people to kind of um, obviously diabetes rates are soaring in in North America. Um, but getting people to take a responsibility for their health and to manage their own disease um, uh, conditions means that we need to give them tools and better tools than this one to actually measure and detect and care for themselves. So, so the way we do that, the way we address so many of these issues, which account for, in the US, 70% of mortality, 70% of costs go to these behavioral related conditions, we need to give them the opportunity to engage with their information and make better decisions based on it. And that's where the feedback loop comes in. The feedback loop is newly resonant and newly relevant because we have the opportunity to collect data more easily deliver it to people more powerfully, and can create an environment where they can act on it more, more emphatically. Um, so I'm just going to give you some examples. I'm going to give you some examples of, of um, the way this breaks out. Uh, my favorite one is the Withing Scale. Um, this is a, a French company. Um, they pronounce it Withings, um, but I pronounce it Withings. Um, this is a scale that uh, tweets what you like. As, as, does anybody have this? You have it. Good for you. You have it too? I have it. Um, this is what my, it also just measures what you weigh and it sends it up to the cloud. You can turn the tweeting function off. Um, so, so this is what, this is what I weigh. I, I converted it to kilograms. Um, uh, so, so you can see my ups and downs. So I, I, when I was, um, when I got the scale a year and a half ago, I was at uh, 72 kilos, and I was um, that was about about um, uh, three kilos more than I wanted to be. It's whatever numbers are, I, when I give this example, people just tend to kind of. I know what you're all thinking. You're all making judgments about how much I weigh. That's okay, but it's just it's just for purposes of demonstration. That was more than I wanted to weigh, and by by being able to just step on the scale and have it automatically sent up to the cloud and, and to my um, iPhone and to the um, uh, web app, it makes me more conscious of my behavior.